With this movie, we pick up getting our facing forward action all in order before we start working with the head turn. We've done both bolts now, left and right. We've given them also a Z depth so that they appear at a certain space in time or a certain place in space, I should say. And then we've got the head and I am going to double click on facing forward and make sure I have that select. We've got our keyframes in there, so we're ready to go. The next thing we want to do is come back to the bot head parent folder. I'm going to double click and go back to the main timeline. We want to create a new action at this top level so that it is accessible for all parts of the rest of the bot. Now if you had a full body, you would want the full body in here, and if it was a rigged body with a skeleton, you would want the rigged skeleton in here as well. So I'll select New. We'll call this action Left Turn. The left turn is open on the main layer for the bot head. But what we need to do now is modify the behaviors or the appearance of each of these individual items. So we'll do the easy one first. We'll go with the bolt left. All that becomes selected. I'm going to select the layer points translation tool and simply move that in. As the character would turn its head, if this was mounted to the side, it would turn and go behind that a little bit. So we're, we're imitating that motion a little bit. We're on the bot left layer, the bolt left layer. When I go to the bolt right layer, we're kicked back to the main timeline again. And this is very important to pay attention to this because it's so easy to get lost if you forget to double check this and come back. So back at the main timeline, I'm going to come down to left turn. I'll double click on that. The bolt right will go ahead and now pull this inward because it would advance towards the viewer and move inward just slightly. I'm going to pull this in just a little bit. But now we're going to go ahead and come down to our layer translation tool and simply adjust the Z depth of this to 0.01. That will put it ahead of the actual head. Now we haven't turned on the two steps we need to to make that happen yet, and we'll do that in just a moment. The reason it's still appearing behind the head is because it's on the bottom of the layers palette. However, when we invoke the sort by depth, that will change. We'll come back to the head portion. We're kicked back to the main timeline. I will go ahead and double click left turn. The head is still active and now we need to change all these parts. We've got a bunch of parts going on here and this is why working with head turns becomes a little more complex, especially when you're working with organic shapes. I'll zoom in just a little bit. We'll select the rivets here first. Just go down a line here of those things. Drag that up. I'll press the keyboard shortcut S for scale. I will narrow those up sideways, and I'm also going to shrink them down just a little bit. Keyboard shortcut T to translate those points. I'll shift, click, and drag and move those over to the right of the head just a little bit. Now for the rivets on this side of the head, keyboard shortcut G, I'll select all of these. Those are selected. Keyboard shortcut S for scale. Since those would be turning towards us, we'll see a little bit more of them so they would round out. I'm actually going to increase them in size just a little bit. Keyboard shortcut T to translate those points and then I'll move them over here just a little bit to the right. All right, next step then is to work on the actual face elements, the eyes. I'll do the same thing here. We'll go ahead and scale this. This is a real easy change right here. Translate just like we were doing with the rivets. Do the same thing and select those. T and translate that over here. And then for the mouth, there's several things we can do. If you're working with layers, and this is a prime example of why you would want to work with layers, you can simply grab the magnet tool right over here, which is keyboard shortcut X. And when you do that and click and drag, you get this nice way to move multiple points at the same time. The problem is it grabs everything on the layer. So in this case, if I start working with that, and I may want that look right now, it's also grabbing things besides the mouth that happen to be underneath the mouth. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this over here and we'll just do it because we'll say that the, the neck could change a little bit. Now, if I clicked again, I could grab one of these bolts and change that. I don't want that. 
I'll show you what I mean right there. No, that's not what I want to have happen. So I will go ahead and just carefully click, keep those off. I can also simply do a selection here as we had done with the eyes and scale that a little bit and then translate it over here to this side. So it's kind of centered under the, under the nose a little bit. With that done, I can return to the main timeline. We're back at time frame zero, well, one right here at the very beginning. Let me back out a little bit so we can see our whole character. At this point, I want to insert the facing forward action to make sure that I don't get a translation or change between this very first frame and the ones coming up behind that. So I will select that timeline one facing forward and then insert the action. Whoops, I'm on the head layer. Let me undo that. We want to come back to the bot head layer and do it from the very, very top level. So you got to see me make a mistake there. Good to catch those early on. So now we'll go to facing forward. I'll select insert action. And you'll notice that while it's inserted, when I was on the head layer, we saw that we had the little markers indicating that we had a change there. That didn't occur right here. However, if we go down to the head layer, we'll see that we have those keyframes added. And if we go to the bolt layers, we'll also see that keyframes have been added there. Now I'm going to move down to frame 24, which is the first place that I want to add a keyframe to hold the head in one position before we turn it. We'll get to that in our next movie.